Hello everyone, I'm Carmela Nova Idig from Group 8. Uh, today I'm going to talk about two Asian ethical frameworks, which are Taoism and Buddhism. And both of these frameworks are complicated and would require much more time to study actually. But I'm going to attempt to um, scratch the surface and discuss the basics and how we might relate them to ethics one. So, starting with Taoism, Taoism, this is one of the many religions in China. And to clarify, this is a common mistake, even for myself, as this is supposed to be pronounced as Taoism, like with D, not Taoism. Now, generally, Lao Tzu was, is regarded as the founder of Taoism between 500 to 400 BCE. So in this, he wrote the book Tao Te Ching, which has been translated so many times, like the Christian Bible, actually, as it contains many teachings and principles. So for other translators, this is interpreted in many different ways. So some of those meanings that were actually intended by Lao Tzu could have been lost or changed. But for this report, we'll be focusing on Michael Lafargue's a translation and commentary entitled The Tao of the Tao Te Ching. So to preface this, as I have prefaced, Taoism is very difficult to explain, if not impossible. In fact, Lao Tzu himself said in the first few lines of his book that the Tao that can be told is not the invariant Tao. The names that can be named are not the invariant names. This is from his book, Tao Te Ching. So from this, you would be a fool to think that you can articulate Tao. And if you think you can, it, that is not really the Tao that we are talking about. But there are attempts to describe it, if not to define it. So what is the Tao actually? We can try to demystify the concept of Tao. So, in its literal translation, the Tao is called the way. Even in this translation, it's a little vague. What is the way? This begs the question, which way or something like that. And from the excerpt, actually, from Tao Te Ching, uh, Tao is uh, described as, um, in essence, it represents the continuous and natural rhythm of the universe. Uh, this serves as the origin of all that exists and it encompasses boundless yet unoccupied wholeness. Uh, Tao acts as the force that gives rise and guides the ceaselessly diverse cosmos. More importantly, the Tao is not the product of creation. It stands independent, it self-sustains, and it is not interested in the universe that brought it into being. So, it doesn't create with intention, or rather it creates and constantly transforms without a specific purpose. So, despite its noble nature, you can still discern an order in a way that it manifests in the natural world. So, from this, the Tao is just how it is. It changes, but not without intention. Parang nature lang siya, something, without any disruption. So from the word Taoism, you might think that uh, Taoists would worship the Tao, but that is not the case here. The Tao is in fact not to be worshipped, but only felt. Um, like I've said before, the Tao uh, asserts that change is the only thing that is constant in this universe. And so there are ways that you can live in harmony with the Tao. So with Taoism, uh, people are guided to live with the Tao in, harmon in a harmonious way. So one of these ways to live with the Tao is through Wu Wei, which is literally translated as not doing. But many scholars have asserted that this is misleading because in sometimes you do in some cases you don't have the choice to do nothing. Uh, for example, uh, the famous example for this is being in the water with the current. So you either ride with the current or go against it. 
So, in this case, Abuwei should be translated or interpreted as just not forcing or having effortless action. It's also described as following the spontaneous course of nature. And it is, again, not swimming against the current. That is the Tao. So if something is meant to happen, do not resist. Uh, basically, let it happen as it should happen. Parang ganun. Okay. The next concept is through the uncurved block or poo. This is one of the many examples used in Taoism because um, uncurved block is very simple. It's basically nothing. It's not formed yet. You don't know how to describe it except that it's an uncurved block. So when you uh, follow the Wu Wei, you let things happen. Uh, you keep things simple. Uh, strive to maintain a state of simplicity and do not force anything. Do not impose your will upon things and this is to let you allow events to unfold naturally so parang do not carve the block like i uh, pasagdan mo lang a block as it is do not carve it to anything else that is the concept of wu wei the following the natural order of nature letting it happen yun lang talaga uh, the next one is very popular in many animes or cartoons we have watched. This is the yin and the yang. So originally, this can be uh, illustrated using like a hill or maybe earth itself because uh, a hill has two sides. My shady side siya, meron din siyang sunny side. But it doesn't stay that way forever. For example, with the earth. Uh, my time na isang side is uh, sunlit, my time din na night siya. But after few hours, mag-rotate ang earth. So mag-change siya, mag-switch siya lang. My sides na from sunny maging shady, and shady maging sunny. So again, this uh, emphasizes the importance of change no, sa universe. It is always changing. And we cannot say that one side is always better than the other. So, for example, if sa Earth, you can't, you can't always prefer night over the day or day over night. During the day, uh, you can do things, you can work, uh, do leisurely things, but you also need the night to rest and to recharge. So, ganun. Uh, this also... Uh, um, emphasizes the coexistence of yin and yang. So one cannot exist without the other. Such as light does not exist without darkness. And happiness does not exist without sadness. So this is a pattern for seeing order in the world. So there is balance in the things. So there is a good part or bad part. Or there is light or dark part. So they exist as part of nature. And you know the way things are in the universe. The next one is qi. Uh, it can be translated as air or breath. So this is described as the energy that forms and connects the entire universe. And qi flows within your body, just like air or breath. And when it stops moving, life ends. So this includes your energy, thoughts, and willpower. So, um, ang qi, I guess, ma, ma, ang maisip ko sa qi is yung param sa the last airbender, yung avatar. So, people have parang inner na thing na nag-flow sa loob-loob nila. And that's called the chi. And there are ways to uh, maintain a good chi or good energy, ganyan. And how to have bad chi. So, an example for maintaining a good chi is, is to meditate. Parang breathing exercises, yung... Um, Prioritizing your inner peace so that you can better connect with the Tao. So, pag wala kang chi, wala ka ng breath, that means uh, you're no longer alive. So, every person from birth pa lang, maran talaga chi to begin with. And they can do things to develop it and make it better. Okay, so now that we have covered Taoism, maybe it was very simplified. I tried to make it understandable. But again, as Lao Tzu said, Taoism is not very easily understood. You cannot really verbalize the entirety of Tao. 
So, you can try to do exercises. You can try to understand uh, the Tao, the wisdom. You connect with it more, but you cannot really express it uh, sufficiently. As we move on to Buddhism, this is another ethical framework that is founded by Siddhartha Gautama. So, Siddhartha Gautama was a prince who lived an extravagant life. So there was actually a prophecy that his father um, like heard na he might, that he might lead a religious group. So what uh, his father did was he got rid of the bad things no, that, might, that might encourage him to lead, to lead a religious group. So sa kanilang palace, he got rid of the ugly, the sick, the old. He only showed the good things to his son Siddhartha. And so he used to live an extravagant life, but something was always missing. But I dissatisfied siya. And so when he got old enough, he was allowed to go out of their place, palace. And so he discovered na meron palang sick, may old. And that's when he decided along the way na he could become a monk and let go of all his worldly or material possessions. And along the way, he also became the enlightened one. And now we call him the Buddha. So we'll discuss more of that later. So in the path to enlightenment of Buddha, he um, expressed that there are four noble truths. So the first one with the Dukkha, the first noble truth, is the truth of suffering. It's basically saying that life will always be filled with suffering. So as this meme goes, uh, the first time you hear the quote, na life is suffering, parang, oh no, it's so sad. No, why do we always have to suffer? But then also on the bright side, when you accept that life is suffering, you may not be so shocked anymore and maybe hope that uh, maybe I can do something about it. I already know that life is suffering, so maybe I can adapt or uh, do actions about it. So that's the basic thought, that life is suffering. Uh, the truth of suffering. The next is as to why we experience suffering in life. Or well, this is called the Samudaya, or the second noble truth. So the cause of suffering is basically ourselves. Uh, we desire things that we cannot get. We get attached to things that that might not happen, that uh, might not be meant to be. And we ignore that there there is a reality, reality of suffering. So either we suffer because of our desires and attachments. And, you know, if we, if we do not get what we desire or what we are attached to, it leads to disappointment and dissatisfaction, which is why we suffer. For example, um aging i think for women it's very dominant to to reverse aging or to not age at all so we use uh, sunscreen uh, undergo treatments to not look old to maintain our youthful looks but then again naturally people age uh, people uh the wrinkles and everything once we have accepted that that we are meant to grow old um Maybe it might not lead might might not lead much to a uh, disappointment and satisfaction. Ayun. So tayo talaga a reason why we become dissatisfied with our life. And a third noble truth, Niroda, is a truth of the end of suffering. So yun naman pala. There is still hope, there's a saving grace. We can still end our suffering. From the second noble truth, since we know that we are the reason for our suffering, maybe we can also do something about it. So, yun. So, ano yun ang ma magawa natin to end our suffering? And that is where the fourth noble truth, or maga, enters the scene. So, this is a truth of the path to the end of suffering through the eightfold steps. So, ito, this outlines the steps that we can do to achieve freedoms from our suffering as well as to attain nirvana. The nirvana is the ultimate goal of Buddhist practice, which is a uh, cessation of suffering. Yun ang talaga. But the eightfold steps come from uh, the middle way. So, ang middle way from what I told you before, si, uh, si Rartha naglib siya in both extremes of life. 
he lived a very extravagant life, but then later on, he deprived himself of material things, even food, because he also fasted for six years. But then in both uh, situations, he realized that you cannot get the answer, uh, both for, um, you don't work. So there is always a middle way, some balance between uh, these two extremes. And so your middle way, you divide nya into eight full steps, you know, know today. So, ito, the right understanding is, you know, uh, the way you interpret things, you have to uh, maintain a positive um, disposition to things. This is connected to the right th thought. You, um, you're encouraged to not let uh, negative things foster in your mind. And with the right speech, do not hurt people with your words. Uh, be careful with how you verbalize things. Good words, wholesome. And the right action is to maintain proper behavior and, co and conduct. Next one is the right livelihood. Uh, in the way you earn money for your living, I do not engage in stealing, robbery, um, murder, worse. Tapat honest pa rin ang pag live mo, pag earn mo. For survival the next is the right effort this is still connected to the right thought right understanding the right effort is that you're willing to work on these um, characteristics and next is the right mindfulness which refers to uh, being present in the moment um, for example because there are many stimuli in the environment so Still, we must not be distracted. Na uh, present parin tayo, and this is connected to the right concentration, where we are able to focus on one thing at a time. And this is very connected sa meditation because you in meditation you focus on one thing only. So yun. But then there are also many other concepts discussed under Buddhism. This is a popular concept called karma. And this is literally translated as action, and this describes the natural law of the universe. Meaning, when you do something, it would always come back to you in this life or next. Every action has a reaction. It's like physics, but it's just how it is. That is the natural law. But then again, the emphasis on this is the intention of the doer. For example, if you... Uh, for example, you have a pet and you have accidentally fed your pet parang poisonous na food sa kanila, but with the intention of feeding them. So parang, because it's not in your intention to kill your pet, it will, it will, it will not give you bad karma. So yun, it's on the intention of the person. And this karma uh, can be encapsulated in this quote, which is, if you want to know about your past life, Look at your present body. And if you want to know your future life, look at your present mind. So I think that says everything na about karma. Because if that eh, in your past life, you had bad karma, and are you born ka into something not so favorable for you, so maybe you might blame your past karma, bad karma, and so on. So itong karma connected din siya sa samsara, which is only the concept of rebirth. Karma pushes people to be stuck in the cycle of rebirth, uh, suffering, and death. And the only way to escape uh, rebirth is by reaching nirvana. So, yun, people are stuck and re or maybe reincarnated into something else until they reach nirvana. And some people actually delay reaching nirvana so they could help other people um, progress not towards nirvana and that will be all thank you so much and thank you